Hi everyone! Now that we have seen the basic functionality of JThread, let's try to implement our own version of JThread. So let's jump right into the implementation. So here, let me name our interruptible auto-joining thread as JThread local. Let's first implement the auto-joining aspect of this thread class. My approach is to use an STD thread and wrap its functionality using our new class. So here, let me have an STD thread type local variable. Now, we are going to have a constructor and destructor for this class. We will code the constructor later, but the destructor is where we handle the auto joining for our thread. So if the thread is joinable, we will call join function on underlying thread in the destructor. This will make sure every object or every thread object calls join function if it is joinable at the destructor stage. Very easy. Now to the interruptible aspect of our thread class. For that, we need a class which wrap a flag which indicate whether the thread is being interrupted or not. So let me define a class called interruptible flag. This flag will be set when we call interrupt on the new thread object. Then, we can have another function which represent interruptible point and it will check whether this flag is set or not. So back to our interruptible flag class, it will have a boolean flag, set function and is set function to quarry the value of the interruptible flag. Now, to our new thread wrapper implementation, we need the ability to call interrupt on this new type of thread. So let's have new function call interrupt in our class. This function will set the thread local flag for underlying thread to true to indicate that it has been interrupted. Notice this function is going to call from main thread or some caller thread, not the thread which is running the tasks internally. So, we need a mechanism to acquire the thread local variable of underlying thread from this interrupt function. So to facilitate this type of mechanism, we need two interrupt flags in this implementation. One thread local flag, which we can declare outside the class, and one variable or normal flag. Now caller thread set the normal flag value, but we need the thread local flag to be set via the normal flag. So what we are going to do is store a pointer to thread local flag in a non-local thread variable of this object type. So when we set the flag from interrupt function, it actually set the corresponding thread local variable indirectly. And for this to work, I have to implement the constructor for this class accordingly. So in the constructor, first we have a template declaration for function and then I'm going to have a promise object. Then we are going to launch the underlying thread using lambda expression and a function object, which is passed to the constructor and set the thread local flag variable pointer value using above mentioned promise type object. And then we can call the function. After the expression, we can get the pointer value of the local flag using future half of the promise object by calling get function on the future. Okay. Now this new thread type object, which is created from the external thread or main thread in our case, has a way to access the pointer to the thread local flag. Then, we can have a separate function called interrupt point, and all it does is check whether the thread local flag is set. If it is set, we can then call return to indicate the thread has been interrupted, otherwise false. Keep in mind, this interrupt point will be execute inside the new thread, and calling thread will set the thread local variable, which is checked inside this function via interrupt function inside the new thread object. Okay, now let's use this new interruptible thread class in an application. So here, I have a code from our previous JThread demonstration. Now in our implementation, we have an interrupt flag instead of stop token. 
so we do not have to have stop token in the function signature. Then, we can notify locations where we can interrupt the code using interrupt point function. Now let me change the main function accordingly to use new thread class and then call interrupt on each thread. Now if you run this example, you can see that thread which run the function with interrupt point only print five times, since we have interrupted the thread after one second, as in previous demonstration. So in this way, you can implement simple, interruptible thread class wrapping very easily. I have provided a link to standard implementation of JThread in the resource section for this video. It is quite different from our implementation. Also, I have given you a link to a YouTube video of JThread implementation from its writer, from Nikolai Jositas as well. So please watch it, and it will enhance your idea about standard JThread implementation.